Good morning. Good morning. We bless God and thank each and every one of you for being with us this morning. We thank you for tuning in to be with us if you're watching virtually. So glad that you have chosen to worship with the St. John Missionary Baptist Church family. Uh, we're grateful that God has and continues to do great things in the life of his people. And we're here to praise him, to worship him, to adore him, and to lift his name. God has something special for you today. And I pray that you're ready to receive that and that you allow God to minister to you today. We're going to have Reverend Lina come down and give us our devotional start. And let us now just get loose. Let God have his way with you. Let God speak to you. Let God lift you. Praise the Lord, saints. We read from Proverbs 23rd Proverbs. And we'll be at verse 24. Verse 24. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that beginneth, begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. We have a hip hop. Grace and eternal God, we want to say thank you this morning, Lord. I want to say thank you for all that you do, Lord, and thank you for all that you're going to do, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. We realize that you are the creator of all. We ask you, Lord, that you would just give us wisdom, Lord, as King Solomon asked, Father God. We don't ask for fame or fortune, Lord, but we ask for your wisdom, Lord, to come into our hearts, wisdom to come into our minds, and your wisdom, Father, to come out of our mouths. Let us not be foolish, Lord, that we can do without you, Lord. We praise you this morning, Lord, and we honor you for who you are, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We've made it around the sun to see another Sunday, and I'm glad about it. Amen. Are you glad about it? It's good to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Oh, yes, it is. Like the dew in the morning. Thank you. 
the doctor told me to come in and get an MRI, so we'll see what's going on. But Brother Frank, Brother Frank, this is Chate, and our team for doing a wonderful job. Again, we want to welcome you to St. John. Thank you for joining us, whether you're listening, watching us virtually or here in house. We're here to have a good time, and we are having a good time in the Lord. Amen. So we bless his name. I do want to say good to see you, Sister Jackie. Thank you. Good to see you today. Bless your heart. Glad to have to see you while we're glad to have you here today. Bless you. Looking good, too. Amen. We appreciate you. And let's enjoy the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many people say that you make it out? Whatever you was going through, whatever the enemy had you found in, you say, I'm making it out. But I tell you, he's, he's a busy son, isn't he? Huh? Come on here. Yeah. Hey, y'all over here. He's busy. He is, he's on his job to distract. They keep us from doing the things of God. The song just says, I made it out. All right now, the song is going to move a little bit. So you can get up and move a little bit. You got to hold on to the pew. <laughs> you don't have to move your body. Just say, thank you. All right, let's go. <laughs> Good to see you, Sister Renee. Bless your heart. Good to have you with us this morning. Amen. 
Ever have your Bibles? I said, Sister Renee, you always kind of look at what Renee. You know? <laughs> This is my Bible. I can do what it says I can. I can have what it says I can have. I can be what it says I can be. This day, I will never be the same. Never, never, never. Ever, ever, ever. It will lift me up, turn me around, place my feet on the solid ground. This day, it is the ever living. Everlasting, ever forever, ever. undestructible, Undestructible. incorruptible, ever living, -living. word that it is. Amen. At this time, people of my name, Lord, come and encourage our hearts. Amen. Sisters, deacons, God is great. God is good. I thank Him every day. Can't thank Him enough. I think He's been that good. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, going to bring a few things here. It's going to be the hard part a little bit. But the words are going to be depend, you depend on the God. Hope, love, faith. Confessing our sins. Trust. Believe. Assurance. Grace. The scriptures I have here is in Psalm 33, 20, 22. So we hope, we wait. And hope for the Lord. He is our help and our chief. In Him, our hearts rejoice. For we trust in His holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. We can depend on it. We can stand on it. We really can. To believe, I know everybody can believe. I know you do. Wouldn't be here. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists. That he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I'm living. But if we confess, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us. Hallelujah. I will forgive our sins and purify us. You can go. You can go with that one there. Are you trusting? Yeah. I trust. Yeah. And this is Proverbs 3 56. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will meet you. Yes, I like that. I like that. I like that. It's so good. I'm sure I'm going to be. 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 I'm going to be.
But this is a little thing. Come on. Drink. It says here in Second Timothy 4, 6 through 8. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is a scope for me righteousness. With the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. Yeah. And I'm not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. Who love him. All who love him. Oh, yeah. Man. And, 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 and these, these, uh, these scriptures I have here. There's one more like here. You got to run. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us. Sin that so easily tangles us. And let us run with perseverance. The grace marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. The pioneer and perfected faith. With the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He died for us. Scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you and me might grow weary and lose heart. I know, I know that my grandfather, his name is George Anthony. He was born in 1877. When I met him, he was in the 70s. And he had like two rooms and he had one electricity deal school in and, and, and floors on all sides. Then we got a radio and one of the And couldn't get him out of Louisiana. Couldn't get him out of there. My mom turned up and said, well, he wouldn't leave. Well, I, we would go to visit him. Give him by the hand. The church wouldn't be far. He, he didn't know how to drive. He didn't drive. Walk to the church. Put it in his I just wanted to Cheryl and I went to his parish in Louisiana, I think in 2006. He had been home for a long time. And my mother told me, I asked her, why you don't leave? Why you just stay down there all the time go to church? And she said, go, oh, we go down there. Went to the church, he told us where it was. When you go there, go to the left side, it's going to be a big old stump. They have weeds on them. Go check it out. And we did. Took the weeds away, took a bottle of water, cleaned it all. The first name on there was 1920. George Anthony. He endured. He was he just depended on the Lord. He believed in the Lord. My mother, I used to go, I didn't want to go to church when I did. Especially at the church that folk would care if she was in church. She was embarrassed. And she could, oh, and she just tear up everything. She just had stuff on the road. And going through this light skin, she didn't get a bruise on. I didn't want to tease her. It was too embarrassing. It was too embarrassing. But I'll never forget it. I came out of the city, like they were at least in the city, and they showed up in my book. So hit me. I was up on my seat so fast. I up here, And after that, I just couldn't get enough. Praise him, thank him, because he did something. Not just to me. I think 
good to you. Amen. And say, I, I, I woke up here this morning. Knees on stiff legs. And when I woke up, yeah. when I woke up, oh, yeah. I said, wow, when I turned out, I got no problem. I said, no, I can't kick high no more. I can still kick. I said, he is able to still keep up. That's the grace. Remember, it's not one by the fastest guy. It's one by the one who's and I hope the Lord will just let me have more time. Whatever time it is. But you get good. I just want to thank you because I enjoy it. It's like men are not to faint. You see, so we can come and say, hey, we do. It's brother. You know what? We, we, we just go to faith. Standing, I'm going to go to the court. I said, when good men are going to do that, good men are going to do that. Good men are going to do that. Good men are going to do that. Say amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, uh, with Brother Gilmore, he took as much as he knew he had to, had to get it all out too. Amen. Let's <laughs> go. He had to get it all out too. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank Brother Anthony for sharing it, but not only just the word, but his personal testimony. We appreciate that. Amen. And just before we begin, I believe the. Uh, Pastor Lee has something special to see when I ask them to come up and uh, make their presentation. Good morning, Saints. Good morning. Well, we just want your uh, Pastor Lee to know that we did not forget you this time. <laughs> Pastor Lee committee, we should wish you a very happy birthday. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say amen. Yeah. Today is, well, not today, Tuesday is the first lady's birthday. She'll be 13. I know, 14. Can I say that? Yeah, I know. I will tell her now. She'll be almost close to me. Amen. All right. But it's prayer time. It's time for us to go to God in prayer as you see his face. We're so glad that in this, as we shared this morning in our Sunday school hour, as the Sunday school was talking about the new city uh, that awaits us, and how beautiful it's going to be, and how serene it's going to be. But now we live in a place of chaos. But we're so glad that we can go to God and He can calm our spirits. So let's go to Him. Even now, Father, we bless you at this moment. We thank you for your love and grace. We thank you, Father, for who you are and all that you are. We thank you for being so kind to us. Here we are now standing before you, standing as empty pitchers before a full fountain, and asking you, Lord, to fill us up. Let our cups run over, but with your grace and mercy. Let us share the good news that someone else would know that you live and that salvation is free. Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, forgive us of those things that are contrary to your will and word. Forgive us, Father, for where we have fallen short. Purge us and cleanse us. And then, Lord, help us to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. Master, I pray for those who are here and those who are watching right now that you would 
move on each and every one of them. If someone's sick, I ask for their healing. If someone's lonely, I pray for their comfort. If there's strife in someone's family, I ask that you would bring it back together. But whatever the need is, as we preached on last week, you are the I am God, and you can meet that need. Father, we pray now for this worship experience. We welcome your presence in this place. And I pray every heart will feel you. And whatever it is that they're in need of, God, that you bless them. But Lord, we just want to pause and thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you that you woke us up this morning, as it was said. Thank you that you kept us as we slept last night. Thank you that you held back the enemy's attacks. Thank you, Father. There's food on our table, money in our pocket, clothes on our back, roofs over our heads. Thank you. Father, for it was nothing, no one but you who made those things so possible. Lord, I praise your name. Even right now, God, I thank you and lift you up for you're worthy to be praised. When I take time to think about it, all you've done for me, when we take time to look back over our lives, we can't help but say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Lord, thank you right now. Bless you, Lord. Pray if somebody is looking and hear my voice or hear this not say, that they will get to know you today. That today will be the day they say yes to your salvation. If someone is wandering away, Lord, help them put aside all those petty excuses. Put aside all those weak excuses. Because at the end, Lord, they must stand before you and give an accounting of their lives. Help them to make, do the right thing now. We love you, Lord. We bless you. Praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. So again, I will have our ensemble come. Again, I just really appreciate the, the ensemble team who uh, really bless us. And I want you to know, thank you so much for your hard work, what you do. We're really going to have them come follow that. Our preacher will come. I do want to make this one announcement. Well, last week, they voted very swift in as their pastor at the Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church. They voted as their pastor. And uh, he will let us know when the other procedures and other uh, things come. So, uh, we just going to lift him up and pray for that church, and God will continue to do what he wants to do for that flock of sheep. Amen? Amen.
<laughs> see, sometimes, you know, we, we have to see it. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. So the un yes, unseen yes. things, the things that you cannot see, yeah. that's yeah. always telling yeah. Not the things in life that you can see that give you problems, the things that you can't see. Yeah. Right. 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 We were coming to work this morning, we were going to turn uh, onto a tangerine. <laughs> You know, there were a couple of cars that were blocking our sight. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but your faith is tested every day. Yeah. And you don't even realize it. So sometimes you have to step out on faith. Sometimes you have to just get on out there and hope that, you know, there's not a car coming around the corner to blind side. But we're tested daily, daily, you know, on how much faith we have in God. So sometimes we fix our eyes on the seeing things, the things that we can see, and not focus on how the unseen things are more important. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what is not, what we do not see. In other words, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, how many of y'all know that God has given us so much evidence of how great he is? I just know, I listened to a pastor this morning, and Brother Anthony, and all those, they kind of hit on my message today. But I, I want you to understand that the things that are unseen are great things. Are things that, you know, that are unlimited that are eternal, that are important to us. And the things that we do see are temporary. Temporary. That nice car you bought, the moment you dove off the lot. Appreciate it, right? Beautiful, right? You watch that thing every day, right? When you get it, right? Yeah. Don't eat my car, right? You know, don't you do that back there. Whatever you're doing, what are you stopping? You know. <laughs> and then six months from now, it's like, hey, I'll get to it. You got a little dirt on it, I'll get to it. Right? Yeah, let's go out there and take my cover and put it on top of the car and cover it up and stuff. Now I'm like, here we are, yeah. <laughs> but it's temporary. It doesn't last. Things that we buy are temporary. Even food, you have an expiration date on it, right? right. It, it's not made to last, right? But we put so much stock, so much stake in things that are not really important. They're temporary. But how come when there's trouble, how come when there's this uh, situation we go through, we, 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 we sit there and we panic? Isn't that too temporary? Does it last always? What's the song? Trouble don't last always? Right? Because it's only temporary. In this life, these things that you see are temporary. Everything that we see with our eyes has its origin in God. And even the things we cannot see. You know, Pastor was talking about, you need your imagination to Envision what city you would like to be in. You know, even though you're not there physically, you can still imagine yourself being there. But sometimes we have a problem with, you know, of staying focused in life. We have a problem of, of not realizing that we 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 have too many, too many things that, that, that we allow ourselves to distract us. And so we lose our focus. We lose that, that, that sense of, you know, of, of, of where we're going sometimes. So we just, you know, begin to, you know, move around, waste our time doing different things like that. But, 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 but I, I realize that if I stay focused on God, if I stay focused on Him, you know, then I'm not shaking. I'm not, I'm not, you know, and life becomes simpler. Life becomes easy to explain. It doesn't, it's not so complicated. 
nothing I have in this life will I be able to take it with me. I was born with nothing. And when I leave this earth, I will not be able to have nothing. How many of you guys want to tie your car to your waist? When you die, you take it with you. It's only temporary. But what God does is eternal. It lasts forever. This church here, let's use this church. The church here, the same job, will be here when we're gone. Right, right, right. right? Yeah, sure. How many folks on the wall up there you see that are still going here? But the, the church is still here. What God has built will last forever. And what we think, think and deem uh, important is only temporary. Paul's writing by the Spirit's direction defines the things that are seen as things that are transient. When you really stop to think about it, everything that you can see is temporary. The most beautiful flower eventually withers and falls to the ground. The sun, the sun, even the sun on its brightest day still disappears over the horizon when the evening comes. The strongest and healthiest person you know in the world lies dead sooner or later. The transit nature of all that is seen is so well understood that we make our plans and live our lives according to it, or at least we think we do. But none of us make plans for a century. How many of y'all plan out a century out? <laughs> Think about it. I'm going to be here in 2320. Do you make those plans? No. Because you know your life is what? Temporary. We know God lasts forever. We purchase our automobiles and our homes and everything else with an eye on for how long it is likely to last or how long we are likely to have need of these things. It's important that we realize that I tell my kids all the time, what I'm doing now is for you because I can't keep this. You know, right? It's going to be yours. You know? I, you know, I, I uh, my mother-in-law, you know, she, for the longest, had the strongest, you know, will about her. She was just a strong person. And to see what has happened to her made me realize that <clears throat> it's only temporary. You can plan your entire life for, you know, certain things. Long-term care, <laughs> you know. All that. I'm going to be set like, but when you get there, when it happens to you, when it finally happens to you, if you get there, yeah. You realize all that you did, all you saved up for, all that would not even benefit you. It's only transient. It's only temporary. The proper understanding of this show is still within our hearts and minds, a realization that it is futile to put any confidence in the things that are seen. But we still say and do many things that indicate that there is something lacking in our understanding. We still will buy that thing thinking that it's going to last forever. The greatest thing in the world that has shown me that things are temporary is buy some milk. And you want some cereal one day. And you see the expiration date, you know. I be pouring out gallons of milk all the time because it's it, 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 it's fire, you know, but it's gone. I mean, things right there. So now I'm like, everything I buy, I'm looking at the expiration date, you know, because I want to make sure it's going to last at least two weeks. So yeah. But again, it's it's it's, it's only transit. We spend substantial amounts of money insuring our lives. But are our lives really insured? Are your life really insured without Christ? He is our insurance policy. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Because he takes care of us in life and he takes care of us in death. How many of y'all I mean, know that farmers can't do that? I don't know anyone who has avoided death by ensuring his life. We frequently, frequently repeat the old saying, you can't take it with you. And that indeed is true. That's why I used to always say, you can't, you ain't never seen a, a, a U-Haul that can hook up to a hearse. And yet we treat our material possessions with a degree of importance that is excessive when you consider the transient nature of both our, of our possessions and our earthly lives. Things that we see, we, we treat so important. Like they, they'll never go away. They'll always be there. You know. But they don't. We we, we have a tendency, you know, uh, I ain't getting my wife. <laughs> but but you have clothes in the closet that you know, hey, you wore 30 years ago, let it go. <laughs> When you go shopping for a new car, some people will, will talk about some automobiles that if they have the capacity to totally change your life and give you some kind of happiness or fulfillment that you have never seen before. It's a bunch of nonsense. A car can't do all that, right? It's not supposed to change your life. It's not supposed to raise you to a new level of happiness. Or fulfillment, all the car is supposed to do is get you from point B, point A to point B. Yeah. You know those three hundreds, you know, we know how those are, right, Pastor? <laughs> At some point, you gotta get a new. Compare the hopelessness and futility of having faith in the things that are seen with the other options. Things that are unseen. The things that Paul describes as eternal. He is speaking here about anything and everything that cannot be seen. But that would be utterly ridiculous. Hatred is unseen, right? Jealousy is unseen. Prejudice is unseen. No. What the apostle is referring to is here is spiritual things. The things of God, the things that are eternal, the things that last forever. And all of the spiritual things, the greatest by far is the Lord Jesus Christ. The forgiveness and salvation that he brings to all who will have it. To all who by faith in him will make it their own. The difference between the things that are seen, the things that are unseen, is as clear and obvious as the difference between present conflict and future glory. The church life has changed. Its destiny is heaven. That is assured through God's grace and mercy revealed in his son. That is the good news, brothers and sisters. It is the good news that gives us hope Hope that endures despite all of the external evidence to the contrary, 
You see, our joy in the things that are unseen is much stronger than our misgivings about the things that are seen. This is his gift of grace to us that we, touched by his redeeming love in Christ, might never despair, but always take comfort in the hope of the gospel. Keeping our eyes faith of faith forever fixed on the things that are not seen, and especially on Jesus Christ, our Lord. Stay in focus. Keep your eyes on him. He'll do what? He'll keep you in what? Perfect peace, right? If you what? So if you're experiencing fear or anxiety, know that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. We don't need to fear we can pursue faith and fix our eyes on what is eternal and what we have in Christ. While, the, while it's true that the seen, the seen exists in the midst of the unseen, it is also true that the unseen is sometimes concealed and sometimes revealed by the seen. The seen is, in one sense, a blind that hides. In another sense, it is transparent Transparency, it is a transparency that discloses. Take the illustration that is yielded by man himself. It is not true of man that he both conceals God and reveals him. It depends on which side you look at him. Take man in his littleness, his, with his selfishness, his ambition, his lust, his passion. He often makes it hard to believe in God. But take man in his greatness. He becomes a living epistle of the deity and incarnate, moving, breathing testimony to the reality of the unseen. Or again, let's take nature. Judge by nature. See how great nature is. Have you seen how, how we, you know, Pastor talked about the sea, the oceans, how vast and how big it is. But you can't see, but only so far. But that don't take away his greatness. I go out in my yard every day in the backyard and I see the beautiful flowers that bloom. And you wonder, you know, you know, you see how colorful they are. And you know God has, has you know, God is nothing but beauty. You know, you think about it. He's everything, but he's beauty too. And to see what he does, it gives me an idea of how great nature is. But nature can be harsh. It can be destructive. Yeah. It can uh, create uh, famine, pestilence, earthquake, fire. Yeah. But she offers a contradiction to the unseen realities we feign to believe in. Even though it, all it does those things, it still has a positive, it has a beautiful side to it as well. And that's the contradiction. But it becomes gentler too. And more benefit aspects, she becomes instinct through every process and seeing what hits of divinity beyond. It's beautiful that it's funny how in the fall things die off, fall down with it. Trees, rainy season comes, gets cold, you know. But in the springtime, you know, I, I you know, my wife she won't let me take out the furniture. You know, for the back guy to tell you the weather gets better. Because you worry about it gets get rained on. You know. I don't mind it getting rained on because I just want to go back there and sit on it, you know, and relax. I'll just buy a new one when I get a chance to because I know it's only temporary. Because he runs out there, you know, you need to cover all that up because hey. I don't want to buy another one. I, I want to keep what we have. And see, that's her excuse. Until she wanted a new one. <laughs> Until she wanted to change it herself, right? So we have a tendency to, again, you know, there's a contradiction sometimes, right? We're walking and talking contradictions sometimes. But I want to leave you with this. 
Philippians 4 and 8. Because I think this is where we need to be in this, in this world. We need to be able to, as it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, yeah. put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. to stay focused. Stay focused on those things that really matter. Those things that God will have us to be aware of. And one of those things is our salvation. Those who don't know him, your focus ought to be in getting to know Jesus Christ. Your focus ought to be getting closer to him and his word. So what was said uh, Somewhere along the line of this week, someone encouraged you to accept Christ. We would encourage you to do that today. To surrender your life. And the Bible says that we are sinners and in danger of hell because of our sin nature. But God did not want us to end up there, so he provided a way to escape. He sent his only begotten son to die on the rugged cross to pay for that debt. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. According to the scripture, thou shall be saved. So if you make that decision today, we want to greet you and to support you by making that decision for your salvation. If you're saved and you're on track, God says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all of Christ. This is your moment. This is your moment. Opportunity. Would you do that? Don't let this moment pass you by. Jesus is waiting with his arms open wide. He's not just a mind. Gift of $177 if you can. All right? God bless you. Amen. Amen. I do want to encourage us all to make every effort we can to uh, celebrate this day together. We'll be celebrating both virtually as well as uh, uh, in house. Amen. Amen. 
Sister Heath's going to come forward. Now, today again is not her birthday. Today will be Tuesday. But uh, as she comes forward, I want to thank God for her. Let's give our, man, our first lady a hand. She faithfully serves this church, faithfully serves this house. And uh, she seriously serves our home as well. But she will be, she's like I said, 50, we're 56 years old. And uh, she's looking good for 56, amen? amen. Time is doing so precious, precious with her. And uh, she wants to share some with you. And afterwards, you can be so kind. Bless her. Let her know you appreciate her. Let her know that you appreciate the uh, time she has uh, given to this house, this church. Amen. Amen. So would you do that? Okay, so Good afternoon, everybody. I just, I wanted to actually just get up and just say thank you. I don't ever want to miss an opportunity to say thank you. For those who already wish me happy birthday, gave me a card, love offer, whatever you've done. Pastor's aid uh, committee, I want to thank you too. And I just want to thank God for another year of coming if the Lord allowed me to see Tuesday. I will be 56 and I'm just thankful. And I just wanted to say thank you. I didn't want, I didn't want that time to pass. And so God bless all of you and thank you for everything. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Amen. And amen. Again, I want to thank uh, Reverend Ryan uh, for his word of encouragement and challenge for us today. Uh, as we prepare to dismiss, uh, we want to be mindful of the fact that we want to make sure we don't forget our tithes and offerings. I want to thank everybody for your faithfulness over these past three years or so with the pandemic. You've been extremely faithful. Now, next week, we also, as we're celebrating our 17th anniversary, remember we have a, a house over here on the uh, U Street, uh, that we had to lift a million, had to uh, get a million, half a million dollar loan for about 10 years ago. So we're down to right under 35, I'm saying right under 35,000. Let's say amen. Yeah. So we can pay it off next week or within the next yeah. few weeks. Yeah. But let's do that, amen. We can celebrate and be debt free when we get rid of this. Amen. So give yourselves a hand. You've been faithful. Amen. So let us stand. Uh, Baskets at the door to bless the preacher as well as your time and offering. If you'd like to bless to see, she has a cash app. That's way. <laughs> well, you can always drop something in her hand. All right, let's stand. Oh, let me just say this. Somebody's asking. We're going to wear our masks for a while longer because the, I know CDC has let down some of its guards, but the virus has not left. And in fact, it's on the rise again. And now it has a partner, monkeypox. So we don't want either of them to invade Jesus' house. Amen. So we're going to wear our masks a little longer and pray for God to help us and make it through. Amen.